pushing buttons and pulling triggers. This is Gun Funny. Welcome to Gun Funny episode 126. Today I'm going to chat with Dave from 22 Plinkster, talk about an attorney general classifying 80% lowers as firearms, and discuss the new Chris Vector 22. I am your host, Ava Flannell, and Dave, how are you doing today? I am doing well. How are you? Uh, I'm doing okay. I just got into like a little bit of an argument on Instagram with, you know, one of those keyboard warriors who called me a gun bunny. But, Mm. you know, I put him in his place. So if anybody like ever talks crap to me, I will not hesitate to put you in your place. And I think they don't expect it because then this jackass, like he ended up deleting his comment, which is hilarious. But yeah. I wish I had a dollar for every time I was called a gun bunny. (sighs) It's just, you know. So I would annoying. be flat broke. I wouldn't even have a dollar. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's not, it's not easy. Although I was just like, uh, how am I a gun bunny? Like you will never, you will not find a single picture on any public forum where I'm showing cleavage or even, you know, like I'm actually very conservative. Uh, not to say that like, I I'm, wish you could say the same for me. I've I got know. a couple of videos no, I know. out there that you can see a little bit of cleavage but i know it's, so it's, it's it's like pg-13 cleavage though but i did have to think twice before asking you to be on my show because i didn't want you to like ruin the reputation of the show uh well i i, I will do my best the show's not over yet yeah yeah if you could just kind of be on your best behavior you know you can curse here and there but other than that like don't say anything sleazy all right okay I'll try my <laughs> hardest. <laughs> uh, all right before we get into it manicore arms They have a Scorpion Evo slider stock, and SB Tactical actually makes the brace version. Uh, It's pretty much identical, except for instead of having a stock, which you would have to classify it as an SBR, you can get the brace. But So if you want to get that, it's $257.95, but if you use the code GUNFUNNY15, you will get 15% off, and that is at manicorearms.com. Learn the things you never knew on Deconstructing the Industry. All right, so I'm just going to be honest. Like, I didn't really prepare too much for this show because this is the week um, before SHOT Show. So when the show comes out, it's going to be Monday. I'll be in Vegas. But, I mean, I've just been, like, pulling my hair out drinking, trying to keep my stress down. So, uh, so I'm not super prepared, but you know, I, there's actually a lot that I do want to know about you because although, you know, I consider you like a pretty good acquaintance, there's definitely things that I, that I don't know. So to start off, if anybody has not heard of 22 Plankster, just tell me like what it is that you do in the gun industry. Oh, wow. Um, I shoot guns. But you need more than that, right? I do. Yeah. If you can elaborate, that would be great because the show needs to be at least an hour. <laughs> All right. Gotcha. Yeah. So uh, that's a lot of fill in. Um, yeah. I already mentioned the obvious of shoot guns. I, I do a variety of like trick shots. That's kind of how I started doing my channel. You know, I, I grew up watching the legends like Tom Knapp and Bob Munden and uh, Byron Ferguson, you know, Saturday mornings. You know, I wouldn't watch them at my house. I would have to my dad was too cheap for cable. So I, my neighbor would film it on a VCR and I'd come home with the VHS tape and, and pop it in the, uh-huh. in the uh, VCR and watch Bob Munden shoot and Tom Knapp shoot. So I kind of grew up like watching these uh, exhibition shooters. Well, I guess and, that's where I went wrong. Here I am, stupid me watching cartoons on a Saturday. <laughs> I could have been like I you. Watched, I watched them too. I watched the Thundercats. So, <laughs> but first I watched Bob Munden. So yeah. And you know, I, I was always intrigued about, you know, watching these guys shoot and it, it, it's kind of a, a long story, but with growing up, my dad's retired military at this point, but, um, he was in the military and grew up with a lot of firearms in the house, not a bunch, uh, but some people it would be a lot, you know, probably mm-hmm. about 10 or 15 guns in the house. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he's had me shooting at an early age and, but my dad was anti recreation shooting. Uh, there was no such thing as recreational shooting with my father one bit because that's wasting ammo. The only time you are allowed to shoot something that was not a squirrel or deer or rabbit, whatever have you, is to sight in your gun. So once that gun was sighted in, you know, the, the, the next shot you would be taking would be hunt. So he would not let me recreation shoot at all growing up. Dang. 
I know, I know. But I'm like really, I'm out, actually like, really starting to feel bad for you. Like here, I was like envious of you, and I'm like, dang, what a crappy childhood. <laughs> <laughs> but the bad thing is, well, the good thing, you know, when I became probably about 13, 14 years old, I found out real quick that, you know what, a box of 22 is only you know, five, you know, 550 rounds is only like eight bucks. <laughs> so I started, uh, I started doing some side work and giving dad my money and, you know, he would go buy me a box of 22 and I could always count on to give me a, a bolt box for Christmas. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I always kid that I was born with the gun in my hand, but I, I really wasn't. It was, I don't think I pulled the trigger for the first time when I was about five years old when the first time I shot a gun. I just assumed that you were going to say since ammo was limited for you, you had to make every shot count. And that's when you started yes. learning your tricks where you were like, all right, I can hit three targets with one round. Yeah. Well, I've, I've, well, I've done that with prairie dogs before, but I've never done that. Like in Tennessee, only out West, I've let them line up, but, but yeah, my dad was such a stickler on ammo. And this, I guess this is the reason why I shoot like I can is, uh, he would give me 10 rounds of 22 and I would, the bag limit for squirrel <laughs> in Tennessee was, was 10 squirrels. And if I came home with only like five squirrels and I did not have any ammo left over, I fired 10 times and only came home with five squirrels. That was five days I couldn't hunt. Dang. So every day, every time I missed, that was a day penalized I couldn't hunt. You do know that now, like in 2020, like this would probably be child abuse. <laughs> but you know what? It, 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 it taught me not only how to hunt, but it also taught me how to take the, the proper shot, the right yeah. shot. And it also taught me not to miss yeah, um, absolutely. because I wanted to go hunt the next day. So I, I guess, I, I guess it has its pros and cons, but you know, now I'll blow through a thousand rounds in a day, like, man, eh, whatever. <laughs> so yeah. it's no big deal. So like, I mean, did he teach you how to shoot? How would you say that you, I mean, or was it yeah, just kind of yeah. all like self-taught? Yeah. My dad, my dad taught me how to shoot a rifle. Um, my dad had some handguns, uh, not, not a, not a bunch. He had a 22 high standard. Uh, pistol with a four inch barrel uh, that I that was like the first 22 pistol I ever shot and I've got that that pistol right over here beside me actually in the safe but he he taught me how to shoot a rifle and you know breathing my dad fired marksman well, excuse me expert in the military back in the 60s and uh fired expert pistol rifle and also grenade and the they actually wanted my dad the army did to become a sniper but he actually decided not to do that um, to follow that path follow that path with the military. So my dad taught me how to shoot, how to get a good cheek weld, you know, breathing, trigger control, sight picture, things of that nature. And um, I didn't really shoot handguns growing up that much. I probably, oh goodness, probably before the age of 21, I may have fired 500 rounds of a handgun in my life. Wow. But I shot a lot of archery. Um, I shot a lot of archery tournaments and that, that's kind of, that kind of taught me how to shoot uh, open sights really well mm -hmm. um, because the front, the front sight pin, you know, on a bow and also the peak sight, but you know, that taught me how to, to, to use sight and to judge yardage and everything like that. And uh, you know, I shot tournaments for a very long time. And then when I got my first pistol at 21, you know, I was hooked and it was, it was a downhill, <laughs> downhill ride from here on out, just buying guns and buying ammo. What was the first pistol that you got? Oh my. I, I, I know, and, and it's a, it's a good pistol. It wouldn't be my number one choice. I do not have that pistol anymore, but I, it was a Springfield XD, uh, two tone 40 cal. Hmm, look at you. Um, I did. Was yeah, it, did it come my, in a 40 too? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was the, the fun, the funny thing about that was my brother-in-law owned his own business and he called me. And when I got off of my, my regular nine to five job, he called me and said, dude, I need help with this job. And I'm like, man, I said, I'll help you. He said, well, if you help me, I'll, I'll buy you a pistol because I just turned 21. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I helped him to from like five o'clock in the evening to two o'clock in the morning, pulling wire and fiber and everything else for this building that he was working on. And Oh, know, I just, I figured he called work. and was like, Hey, I need to dispose of the body. I'll give you the gun that was used <laughs> no, in the crime. <laughs> no, no, no. That was the week before. That was oh, the week okay. before. Um, so he, um, so I, I got a Springfield XD, you know, it was like the full size, uh -huh. but I found out real quick that I was a horrible shot and uh, I needed a lot of practice. So I started practicing with it and I found out a lot of it wasn't me. A lot of it was the gun. It just didn't fit me. Mm -hmm. And that's why they make 500 million thousand different kind of guns is because not every gun is good for each individual. And then yeah. I picked up my first H and K and it was all downhill from there. 
Hmm. So what would you say your favorite handgun brand is now? What oh do you shoot the word. best? Wow. Talk about put me like brand or my favorite gun that I own. Uh, let's say brand, because I know that there are certain brands that I definitely shoot better with. And as much as I, cause like the HK VP9, I love that gun. It felt great in my hand, but for whatever reason, maybe the angle, I just was not as accurate with it mm-hmm. as I was like with a Glock. I can see that. Now, are we sticking with strictly with centerfire with this question? Um, yeah, let's do that. Because, okay. All right. Cause that's, that is some, yeah. So my favorite centerfire would have to be H and K. Just because of what you mentioned before, the grip angle, mm-hmm. I don't like Glocks. I can't shoot them. I can shoot them okay, but I'm not a big Glock handgun guy. You know, I've mm-hmm. got probably three or four of them, and I can shoot them okay, but the H&K fits my hand better. The grip angle, the H&K, that's just what I'm used to because most of your Target 22 pistols are on the same grip angle as uh, as something like an H&K and not a Glock. Hmm. So it's just more natural. It what about Smith and Wesson? Forward. That's my second choice. So um, I was going to say because, theory. because like my friend can shoot Smith and Wesson like all day, you know, really well. And I'm not saying like I'm off. Like I'm just like, oh, not even hitting the target. Like I'm just not consistently shooting bullseyes. Yep. But he doesn't shoot Glock as well. So it's like, it is weird how it does make such a difference, like depending on like the angle and the ergonomics. And that's why when students ask me what gun I would recommend, I'm like, I could recommend certain guns or brands that are reliable, but at the end of the day, you're going to have to go there, rent them, shoot it because what yep. shoots really well for me may not shoot well for you. You're you're exactly right. And, you know, I'm just glad there's, there's a million different kind of guns out there. And I, I carry a Smith and Wesson shield. You know, that's, that's usually what I carry nine times out of 10. It's either that or it's going to be a, uh, car, uh, car. What is that? Which car is that? Is uh, that the P-Line? little 380? No. Not, I always thought I that gun was so cute. And every time I look at it, I'm like, yeah. ah, I need it. Like for a while, I went through this obsession with like little 380 guns. I don't even know why. Like even the Browning, the 1911 that was 380. I'm like, oh, I yeah. need this. It's so cute. And <laughs> I have no idea. I'm like, I don't know what my obsession with it is, but. Yeah. But if I'm full size carrying, I am, I am that guy that's carrying a HK 357 SIG. If I'm carrying a full size gun. Oh, come on. You're um, just trying to be like Jack Williams, is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, yes and no. Um, the, you, the you only American. started it because after, you know, after he saved the day. Yeah. Yeah. He, you know, there's a little bit of truth to that, but no, that's been. <laughs> That's been my carry gun, like full size carry gun, and like in the winter time when I can, you know, carry yeah. conceal comfortably, and you know I'm not wearing my speedo. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's hard to conceal carry. You're always like, you know, printing with that thing. But mm-hmm. uh, that's 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 what I carry usually. I always I always have a Glock in the truck, Glock 19 in the truck. You know why I always keep a Glock 19 in the truck? Why? Because if it gets stolen, you don't you care. Can get a Glock 19 anywhere. <laughs> you know, you can go to any gun shop and get a Glock 19. So. Uh, oh. and Glocks are reliable, you know, they're accurate and they're mm-hmm. reliable. I can shoot them. Okay. I, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not dissing Glock by any means. It's just not my cup of tea. Yeah. No, I, I completely understand. I'm the exact same way. So I'm curious, like, so, okay, you're 21. What kind of jobs did you have before you started your YouTube channel? <laughs> I only worked a couple of jobs. So my first job, I did landscaping and manicuring lawns mm-hmm. in Nashville. So we didn't cut yards. We manicured lawns. There's a difference. Uh, you know, the lawns with a little tre- checkerboard patterns and mm-hmm. stuff. That's what I did for about four years. And after that, when I got into college, uh, I still did that on the side, but I, I played college basketball. So what was your you know, major in college? Practice- My what? What was your major in college? Uh, wildlife management with a minor in biology. Oh, nice. So I went to school to become a game warden. That didn't work out too well. That's a, that's a, that's for another podcast. <laughs> so, but yeah, I, I, I still did landscaping stuff out of college. And in the summer I would do construction, uh, a buddy of mine owns a construction company. And then I went two years of college and it, it just wasn't for me. Um, I majored in playing basketball and finding a wife and I did that in two years. So I dropped out after that, you know, I, I started, uh, I worked for Coca-Cola for good grief, like four months. And I found out there's a lot easier way to make a dollar. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always been an electronic guru. So, my dad pulled some strings and I started working with uh, a company 
in 1998, the year you were born, a company <laughs> called Security Link, which was the second world's largest security company. And uh, worked for them for three years. Then ADT bought us out, ADT Security. Everybody's heard of ADT. Yeah, I actually and, uh, can't stand them. That's yeah, another I, I, story. I can't either now. So, but uh, <laughs> but but I, I worked in the security industry for about eighteen years. Hmm. So I was there for a really long time. I loved my job. I worked Monday through Thursday. I worked ten hour days, and then I was off every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Seven weeks paid vacation. Uh, company vehicle, company cell phone, company computer. I, I love my job. Great yeah, you benefits. can't beat that. Yeah, so it, it was a lot. It, it was literally a lot when I quit my job. Uh, with ADT after being there 18 years to to pursue, you know, basically shooting full time. How old uh, were you when you quit? Um, if you don't mind me asking. See, I'm, no, I don't mind. I'll be I'll be 41 uh, next week, so I was 37. Hmm. Uh, so I've been I've been doing it four years full time. Yeah, because I was thinking I'm like you don't look that old, but then when you say you were at a job for 18 years, you're like, oh, yeah. maybe you know. But I guess maybe you are ancient. Yeah. But then again, I like think about like when I graduated high school or how long ago I graduated college and it like makes me feel super old. So yeah, <laughs> I was, I was the technician that put the security system in the Mayflower. Oh boy. That's cool. Yeah. So that's how old I am. You're only as old as you feel. And right now I'm about 140. So stayed up a little late last night. I watched my buddy, uh, went to Nashville and watched a boxing match and. He is now 4-0, and so he turned pro four fights ago, and Dang. he took care of business. Isn't it funny, though? You, like, stay up, like, maybe an hour past your bedtime, and you're, like, the next day is, like, shot. Yeah. <laughs> and you're, and like, used to, you're I, like, I used to stay up, like, pull <laughs> all-nighters, go to work, do it all again that night, and, like, maybe sleep, you know, like, three days yes. later. Yes. I, I, I used to fish uh, bass tournaments for about 10 years, and so I, I could fish all night. You know, we'd have tournaments at night. I would you know, start at seven, get home at six o'clock in the morning, do all the chores, cut the yard and finally go to bed Saturday night. It wouldn't, you know, I'd be a little tired, but mm -hmm. it was no big deal. Now, man, good gravy boat. If I don't go to bed at like 10, 30, 11 o'clock, <laughs> right. I am, I am not worth two cents the next day. Yeah, I know. Although I will say ever since I started working out, I definitely have a lot more energy and I'm not as tired the next day. So, and I also don't get hangovers as bad. So, well, that's good. It's kind of weird. I, I quit working out. So I, I refuse to work out. I refuse. Like, is that why, like, is that like why you only out. shoot 22 long rifle? That's right. Because I have no muscle mass. <laughs> like it, it's, 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 it's nothing. Um, I had to do it. No, I had when, to do it. You yeah, walked into it. <laughs> when I played, <laughs> when I played college ball, you know, you'd have to be in the gym every morning at 4 a.m. lifting weights. Dang. And, and I made a promise to God. I'm like, God, you get me through these two years. I will never touch another weight. And I have it. <laughs> and I have kept my promise. Uh, if nothing else, you should do it for your health though. Cause it is, and it, it like mentally, physically, it makes you feel so much better. Now I get on the elliptical. Does that count for anything? I guess. Yeah. So, I guess cause, cause my knees are shot. My, my, like I've got very bad knees, too many years of basketball and had knee surgery two years ago on my right one. My ACL's torn in my left knee. Uh, I just keep putting off surgery. You but should do what just, I do, which is bar classes. It's low impact. You'll probably bar be, classes? yeah, B A R R. Like you're just lifting the bar. It's not like you're going to the bar. Yeah. Uh, no, believe it or not, for once, I'm not going to the bar. I'm actually going to the B A R R E. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. But it's, it's amazing. And it just, it's like small movements, low impact, but it's just crazy how much muscle you build up. Like, I don't want to brag or anything, but I feel like my entire muscle, like my entire body is like, I, I have muscles now that I didn't even know there was muscles like in that part of my body. I had a muscle once. Yeah. All right. So, well, on that note, <laughs> on that note, we are going to take a quick break and talk about SB Tactical. So if you guys hear this, uh, the week that it comes out, I will be at SHOT Show and I'm going to be at the SB Tactical booth on Friday at 11 a.m. And that is at booth 248. I think they have some new stuff in the works and uh, I will be recording some footage with them. So I'll be posting that as well, but pretty excited. So like I said, if you are at SHOT Show, definitely stop by and say hi. And I'll also be at another booth, which I'll tell you guys here in just a moment. All right, so Dave, how did you come up with the name 22 Plankster? It was total by accident. 
when I got into YouTube, it, it was not to, you know, make a name for myself or to make videos or anything. I started YouTube as a dare from a friend of mine. He was stationed in the uh, Navy in Florida. And of course, I live here in Tennessee. And we were talking about the show Top Shot. Uh, do you remember that show? Mm-hmm. That used to come on the History Channel, you know, and all that good stuff. Yeah. Well, my buddy Dustin Ellerman won it season two, which Dustin wasn't my, my friend at that time. But I was pulling for Dustin. You know, he hit the golf ball at 100 yards with the 22. The next day, my friend and I were talking on the phone about it. He lived in Florida. And he was like, man, that is the biggest luck shot in the world. I'm like, no, if you got the right equipment, the right ammo, you know, 22 golf ball, that's not too difficult. You know, it would be hard to do with bulk ammo and a Ruger 1022 consistently, but Dustin was shooting a Vacorson with match ammo. So, you know, it, it could very well be done. And my buddy was like, no, that's the biggest luck shot, whatever have you. I was like, all right, when I get home, I, I I'm going to shoot a golf ball at a hundred yards. I said, but I won't do it with a uh, rifle. I said, I'll do it with a pistol. And he's like, you can't hit a golf ball at a hundred yards. And, and all this other stuff. And I was like, all right, when I get home, I will, I will film me doing it. So got home from work, had a few hours of daylight left. And you remember, I don't know if you remember or not, but the first, uh, Android phone that hit the market was called the droid. It was I sold by remember Verizon. That. Yeah. And so they, I had a, an original droid. And the only reason why I got this phone, cause it shot 720p. And, you know, it was 26 frames per second, 720p, which was technically HD. And so I grabbed my Ruger Mark II competition target and a uh, golf ball. And I get up there and it is the most painful. Do not go back and look at it. Please don't. It's still up there on the interweb somewhere, but <laughs> do not look at it. It's, it's, it's extremely painful. And I, I walk up to the camera. I'm like, uh, Dustin Elliman hit a golf ball at a uh, hundred yards with a 22 rifle. I'm going to try to do it now with a 22 pistol. And I just take off and I walk. So like three quarters of the video is just me walking a hundred yards. There's no editing. There's no anything. <laughs> so I get up there and on the second shot, the golf ball goes flying. So I hit the golf ball at a hundred yards. I pick up the golf ball and I was going to show the bullet hole to the camera. And I forgot to hit the record button on the camera. <laughs> and, uh, so how, you know, how you and I were talking about that earlier. And uh, so I put another golf ball up there, did the whole painful speech again, went back, third shot, golf ball went flying. And so I needed a way to send that. Well, the, the video was like something like 400 megs, and there's no way you can send a 400 meg video via text back then on a 3G network. Mm-hmm. I didn't have high-speed internet at my house. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna guess upload this to YouTube where he can watch it. And I did not watch YouTube. I did not. At that point, I never watched a single gun video on YouTube. I watched like viral videos of like people getting hurt and like cat videos and stuff like that, but never like gun videos, even though I was into guns really big. I'm not, um, I'm just going to take a break and I'm not going to ask why you listen, like looked at cat videos. Like that's a little weird. Like, David, don't judge me. Don't okay, judge me. Okay. Okay. All I, right. I, I like cats. So, okay. I just wanted to put um, that, I just wanted to insert that comment. We're going to move <laughs> forward. <laughs> I'm not a big cat person, but you know, it is what it is. But there wasn't a lot of content on YouTube, you know, eight, nine years ago. You know, you, this was in the, in the glory days, the, the building days of YouTube. And it was, it was amazing, uh, the platform that it was. And, uh, so I went to try to upload the video and it wouldn't let me do it. It said you needed to create a channel name to upload a video. And I'm like, well, what am I going to be? And so I said, you know what? I'm shooting a 22 and I like, you know, shooting a 22 is called plinking. So I was like, all right, I'm going to be like 22 plinker. And so I tried to submit that and YouTube's like, nope, that name's already taken. And I'm like, all right. I'm like, well, my name's Dave. I'm a kid of the nineties. Everybody called me Davester growing up. So how about 22 plinkster? And that name wasn't taken because there was only like 27 people on YouTube at that point and um, uploaded it. And I sent the link to my buddy. He watched it. We laughed about it. We talked about it. That was it. That's all I wanted YouTube for. Did not want to make another video as long as I live. So that's how I kind of started. And that's how the name, that name came about. It was literally in my kitchen and I had to hurry up and just think of a name. And that's what I put in. Did you ever go back and see who owns 22 Plinker? No, I don't. Uh, at one time, I think I did, like when I first did it. Yeah. And, you know, he didn't even have a profile picture. I don't know. That, 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 uh, 
you know, that account could be deleted by now. Uh, right. We're not even in existence. But yeah, but back then it was it was 22 Plinker was taken. So I could be 22 Plinker instead of 22 Plinkster. You know what kind of annoys me? So I'm, I think I've announced this before and I'll have more details next month, but I'm starting a second podcast with someone. And so right now we're securing like all of the social media and Instagram. I wanted a specific name. It's taken. So I look to see, all right, who has it? Literally, this person has zero followers and they're only following one person. There's no profile picture. I emailed them, asked if I could buy it. The chance of them actually getting back to me because they probably like it, it looks like the account is like inactive. But I did have a meeting earlier with the web developer and she said that there's a way to find out who owns it <laughs> to contact them. Because I'm like, it would just be really? so much easier if you can keep everything, you know, the same name and not have to change it yep. or add a underscore or dot. So, yeah, it's just. Yeah, it, I, you know, the thing is with like YouTube, that's how I started. Then after I started doing YouTube, people's like, you need to get a Facebook page. And so I got a Facebook page and they're like, hey, you need to get a Twitter page. So I got a Twitter page and luckily I came into it early, which I can keep 22 plinks on everything. And, um, and I guess it was probably about four years ago, three or four years ago. Um, I was at NRA meeting. I, I forgot where it was. And this guy came up to me and said, Hey, you know, I follow you on Instagram. I'm like, you don't follow me on Instagram. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, I do. He said, man, he said, I, why don't you ever post anything? I'm like, man, you do not follow me on Instagram. I said, I don't have an Instagram account. And he was like, yeah, you do. And I'm like, no, I don't. So I'm sitting there arguing in the middle of the aisle with this guy about, about Instagram and so I downloaded the app on my phone and I just used my email and my password that I always use for a lot of my stuff. And sure enough, I had an Instagram page and I had like 5,000 followers and I didn't even, I was like, and I looked when it was created and that's when I was on Percocet. Oh boy. And I created that page. My, I had two herniated discs in my back. And so for like three months, I was on disability and off of work and I, I was in extreme pain. And so I had to take, uh, pain meds and, and that's when I created it. And I don't even remember creating it. So then I was like, well, if I've got an account, I should be posting stuff here, I guess. So, but yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of weird how that happened. I had to argue with a guy for like 10 minutes saying, hey, no, you don't follow me. And he did. And so I had to apologize and give him a box of ammo. Well, if that's how you act on Percocet, do not take Ambien because I've got stories. Oh, I don't. I uh, know. No, 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 no. Now, Ambien, is that the, is that the stuff like makes you fall, fall asleep? Uh huh. Yeah. But it, it's apparently, so I thought that it, like, I haven't done anything too crazy, but I used to go shopping a lot. And like when In I your first, sleep? yeah. So I had to take my credit card information off my phone because I would shop in my sleep. And the next thing I know, I have like boxes delivering at my house. And I'm like, what is this? Like I ordered uh, two sets of pots and pans, not even the colors that I like. I don't even cook. I'm like, oh, okay. What, what? was Ambient Ava thinking? <laughs> Ambient Ava. That's now that <laughs> is an awesome YouTube channel name right there. You can just have like cameras set up all around your house that record like 24 seven and just get right? you like, like doing stuff in your sleep. Hey, I'd subscribe to that. So, <laughs> but apparently but yeah, it's, God. apparently it's a thing. Like there's been a lot of people that go shopping on Ambien because I thought that that was like weird. And I just, yeah, I eventually got to the point where I was like, uh, I can't keep doing this. And yes. so I took my credit card off my phone. And see, the thing is, I think we may have discussed this before. I, I have severe insomnia. I started do. Probably I go about through five it too. years ago. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you know, my mind never shuts off. It, it, it never shuts off. Yeah. And so it's hard for me to go to sleep. And finally I went to the doctor about it and he was like, well, yeah, we can, you know, give you some of this. I'm like, I've heard of that stuff. People like, like wake up, not wake up, but just get in their car and drive to Florida in their underwear <laughs> on that medicine. I'm like, you don't No, That's not what I want. I was like, I shoot guns for a living. I'm, I, that's not what I want. Like, yeah, I want to be able to know what I'm doing. So but yeah, I just, I just suffer through it. it Have you tried the, hard at times. like the natural stuff? Oh my goodness. Yes. I can take, what's that stuff called? Melanoma? Yes. Mel melan. Yeah. I, melatona. Yeah. Melanoma is something yeah. totally melanoma different. Melanoma is like, that's yeah. Bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that, yeah. I, I, but yeah, I tried that. I can eat that stuff like candy and it doesn't even phase me. Like one night I, I ate like, like took like four pills and it didn't even make me sleepy. Yeah. I haven't tried it. I will say so, though, um, Ambien doesn't really affect me at all anymore. So I don't know. Not that, 
you've cut your credit cards. Like you could be shopping, but they keep getting denied. And you <laughs> right. Never know it. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm in debt. I don't know it. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Well, it's not fun. Yeah, it is a little funny. It is. Yeah. It's funny. So, okay. So I want to know what is it that you concentrate on when you're shooting? Because you like, it is mes- like mesmerizing to watch your videos because you will literally just like one shot And the bullet splits and it hits two objects and it's just insane. So like, what is it that you concentrate on before you take that shot? Oh man, I don't, you know, it's kind of hard to explain. It's like, um, that would have been a poor analogy, but this is going to be a poor analogy, but it's like Michael Jordan, you know, he used to shoot free throws with his eyes closed and, and make them. And, you know, I'm not comparing myself to Michael Jordan or anything like that. I was actually a better ball player than Michael Jordan, but that's a, that's a totally different subject. But, you know, I, it's, you shoot so many rounds and, you know, the big thing that I really focus on the most is probably trigger control. I try to keep my movements down. People are like, man, you must have like a, a super, super steady, you know, hand. And I'm like, actually, I, I do have a steady hand, but. I know people that have a steadier hand than me that can't shoot and do what I do mm-hmm. just because they either flinch, you know, mm-hmm. they don't have good trigger control, you know, so, you know, you get these bullseye shooters that have just a super, super steady hand. That's not me. I do have a steady hand, but I mostly like concentrate when that trigger is going to break. I actually concentrate more of when that trigger is going to break than I actually do my sights and the target that I'm shooting at. Mm-hmm. I kind of just get it in there and it's kind of just, I don't know. You just get like tunnel vision when I shoot, when I do precision shooting, if I speed shoot, just slap and steal and whatever, that's, that's totally different. But when a lot of my shots are decided by one, one thousandth of an inch. And if I'm off, you know, I miss the shot completely. So you've got to, it's a little bit of training, but you know, with a little bit of practice, you know, most anybody can do it. Yeah, actually. I mean, the way you described it is pretty much exactly what I do. And that's probably the, the main, like the main thing that I focus on is just, you know, and I've always said like I'm a good trigger puller because mm-hmm. even when I was shooting a long distance, which I was kind of a natural at it. And, um, and when, when I went to Texas and shot a mile, I only had like 15 minutes to set the gun up, sight it in and then take my shots. And it was like after like the second or third shot, I hit it. Wow. And yeah, but I've, but it's, that's really what I concentrate on because sometimes I do, I'll look at the site, I could see it and then kind of like tunnel vision where it might even get kind of blurry, but I'm like, whatever, take the shot. Yep. And yep. So you're saying there's a chance that I could be like you. Oh, absolutely. Uh, (laughs) I guarantee you when when you come up to the house and we have a shoot off Yeah. with, within, well, with already with your skills and stuff within five minutes, I'll have you like splitting playing cards pretty consistently at like 25 and 30 feet. Yeah. Cause I told it, well, we talked about this cause I did make a YouTube video when I was uh, reviewing a Volt Quartzen 22 pistol. And, and I was like, yeah, you know, I saw 22 Plinkster. He was like, you know, splitting cards in half with, you know, with bullets. And so I just wanted to see if I could do it and I did it. And I was like, oh gosh, like that's not hard. <laughs> but then you were no, like, oh, not. I mean, it is, you know, it is, it's not like super easy. Like there's, you know, Believe but it or not, I ask you, did you do it? Did you do it backwards or with the pistol upside down? Yeah. So that's what you said. And I was like, well, do that, you know, I know, I know. And I was like, oh, well, I guess I shouldn't be proud. That's cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> just crushed your dreams. <laughs> I know. But, but I, I mean, I do realize like just being an instructor and I've trained all kinds of people, all different, you know, levels of expertise. And there's a lot of people that really don't shoot that well. And like, for me, you just think it's easy. Like there's really like three things that I really concentrate on. So like the grip, you know, kind of keeping the gun steady, side alignment and trigger pull. Like to me, those are the the three biggest things that I concentrate on. And sometimes when I teach, I'm like, I'm like, you guys, what are you like shooting with a shotgun here? Like you're all over the place. (laughs) (laughs) But, but you know, some people just aren't good shooters and it's just, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. And you're talking about training people. I have taught, I, I don't know if I can say hundreds of people how to shoot, but I've taught, I've taught dozens and dozens of people how to shoot, you know, for the first time. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if you lay the ground rules of, of how to properly grip the pistol, 
stance. I don't get hung up on stance too yeah, much. Yeah, I don't either. Because um, everyone's know, body's I, I different. You know, so like if you're uncomfortable. You're, you're exactly right. If you're uncomfortable, you're not so going to shoot long, that well. You're exactly right. And as long as you have a good grip, trigger control, sight picture, you know, I, I shoot, when I precision shoot open sights, I use a modified weaver. Uh, when I shoot uh, red dot precision, I use an isosceles stance. Uh, so, it, and, then, and if I speed shoot, I use an isosceles stance. So there's, I, I can't, you know, one stance is not, you know, for mm-hmm. everybody. Like Hickok 45, you know, he uses, he uses a Weaver style stance from like 1940. You know, that's, yeah. that's his stance and he's very good at it. So I don't get hung up on stances too well, as long as you have a good base and like, you're not getting rocked back after every shot. But I, I much, much, much rather teach a female new shooter than I would oh, yeah. a new shooter that's a guy. Totally. Um, Oh my goodness. Uh, I, I coached, man, I coached college level two years and I coached also local basketball teams, uh, for like five or six years. I coached boys for one year and I promised I would never coach another boys team. And then from there on out, <laughs> I coached girls teams because girls actually listened to, I know. you know, they didn't have the, they didn't have the ego or the, that the man yeah. has. And I can say this because I'm a man, but they, they, they listen, they, they followed every instructor. And just to be honest, women make better precision shooters than mm-hmm. men just because of that fact. Yeah. Although I will say a lot of my students, I still teach probably more males than females, but most of the guys that sign up for my classes, they don't have a huge ego because they already know that they're going to be taught by a female. It's not like there's a chance that like I have. Yeah. So, because everybody's like, oh, you know, how is it being a female instructor and teaching men? And the, the truth is, is I really don't run into a lot of problems because they know what they're getting themselves into. So if they didn't want to take, you know, if they didn't want to learn from a female, then they wouldn't, they would have signed up for another class. So that, I've, that I've, is a really good point. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. So I've so, lucked out where they listen and they're, you know, shooting well. And I've always had this thing where it's like, if you just give me like literally like 10 minutes with you, cause I have a really good eye and I can figure out really quickly, like what somebody's doing wrong. And if, as long as they're listening and they can correct it, like I could have them shooting, you know, really well. That's, that's, that's a really good point. So yeah, yeah, I, I, I ever, everybody can, you know, expand with their shooting, just like anything, you know, there's, there's things that, you know, you could teach me, there's things I could teach you. Uh, I, I need to have more training probably in my life that I'm not so, I don't know, just focused on one thing. I need to be a better all around shooter in, in some areas. Uh, but precision shooting is what I do. Yeah. Now, if you want me to do a Jerry Mitchell like and hit, you know, five still targets under a second, I can't do that. You know, I don't practice that. Even but though I guess I should. Even though recently, according to the Gundy's Awards, which I mean, that was kind of like BS because I should have been at the top. But that's I, neither I here or there. <laughs> but you actually came in first, and then Jerry Mitchell came in second. I don't know that whole thing. Yeah. Um, so the whole thing was weird because people could vote like multiple times, whereas I think it would have been a little bit more accurate if somebody could, was only able to vote once. And, yeah. and you know, I never I never posted that on any of my social media. Not one time did I share people say, hey, vote for me. I've been nominated to this. I knew about it two months ago. It's not like I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. what am I nominated for? I knew about it because I got the emails and yeah. stuff like that. And they they wanted us to promote it. And honestly, I. I have a hard time doing that. I don't want people to vote for me, just say, Hey, vote for me. I want people to find it on their own and say, Hey, 22 Fleecers are nominated for this. And you know, that's, that's what I want. I I never want to pander for likes. You know, you'll never hear me say I I can count on one hand. Well, actually one video that I even told people to share the video and like the video. And that was to uh, raise awareness for cystic fibrosis, a fundraiser that, you know, I raised about $38,000 for from the video. And, Mm -hmm. you know, that's the only thing I told people because more people who would watch the video is more people that would, you know, donate. And I turned the monetization off of it. So I didn't even, I didn't even make a cent on the video. I didn't want to make a cent. You know, Mm -hmm. it was all about, you know, raising awareness for cystic fibrosis. So I I just, I just have a hard time asking people to vote. I'm, I'm not a politician. It's just not me. It, it never will be. And if I ever come to that person, it's it's time to time to find another job or another mm-hmm. occupation. 
Well, I guess I have to like rethink my whole thing because at the end of my YouTube videos, I'm like, and don't forget to like, comment, or subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're just like making me, is, now you're making me feel really totally bad. That is totally okay. I, I've, I, that is totally okay. I, I don't look down upon anybody to do it, uh, that, that does it because honestly, most people just go from video to video to video. It's not even and they thinking forget about to subscribing. Do, yeah. And I'm like, Oh, you said it. Yeah. I'll hit that button. You know, it's, yeah, that's, it's not a, it's not a big deal for me. I just, I don't, I don't want it to become something like at a popularity contest. Mm-hmm. I want you to vote for me because, you know, not because you follow me on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook or anything like that. I, I want you to vote for me because you came across this page wanting to vote for somebody else. I'm like, Oh, no, I want to vote for him instead of him. So that means more to me than, you know, me pandering for a vote. Yeah. Makes sense. I'm curious, like what's the most difficult or challenging trick shot you've ever done? A left-handed layup. A left-handed what? Layup. I, I, I can't use my light, light shoot with my left. Oh, we're talking about shooting. We're not talking about basketball. Yeah, no, we're talking about shooting. <laughs> That's so why I don't know what it is. You, uh, it's like I get I get questions all the time in the comments. Like, is there anything that you can't hit? I said yes. A left handed layup. I'm like <laughs> I struggle with that. So probably probably the most difficult shot. All right, let me back up a little bit. Just because the camera shows you one thing, and you think to yourself that is an extremely difficult shot, doesn't mean that it's really difficult. If that makes sense, okay. The perfect example is this, you know, a couple of months ago, I uploaded a video uh, when I taped a knife blade on a spinning wheel and I spun it around and I backed up like 20, 30 feet and Andy Oakley style hit the knife blade as it was spinning on the bicycle tire to split the bullet to pop two balloons. Yeah, I saw that. People were like, holy cow, that's like the most difficult shot. And I'm like, I actually did that shot in two shots. Like I hit the, the blade on the knife the first shot, but it didn't split it. I hit it to the edge. Second shot, I split it. And they were like, that's, that has to be the most difficult shot you've ever, I'm like, actually, that was like one of the easiest. Yes, it looked cool on camera, but honestly, you know, you have an X axis and you have a Y axis. Mm-hmm. Okay. When, when you're shooting or at a graph, X and Y targets are very easy to hit. For me, they are anyways. When you talk about Z axis, like bullseye, like bullseye shooting, that's more difficult, like shooting through the barrel of another 22 pistol, which I've done before, shooting through a straw or an arrow. You know, when you have that Z axis, that is, that's what's difficult because not only do you have to worry about your elevation, you have to also worry about your windage and also the angle the bullet is going down or up, depending on what you're shooting. But the, but to go back to all of that, the hardest and the most difficult shot I've ever done in my life was my buddy asked me, he said, can you hit a golf ball out of the air if I pitch it up in the air with a pitching wedge? And I said, I don't know. Let's find out. So I grabbed my 1964 Colt Woodsman. And some bulk ammo, and he chipped a ball in the air with the pitching wedge, and I shot it with the pistol. Now, it was safe. I had about a, you know, 100-foot bluff. Mm-hmm. You know, I wasn't shooting up in the air or anything like that. But that's the most difficult shot I've ever tried because when when I practiced a bunch shooting aerial targets, I used to have a five-gallon bucket at my old house, and I could toss golf balls out in front of me about, about three or four feet, and I could shoot them out of the air with the pistol. At one time, I hit 64 in a row just tossing them out three feet in front of me, shooting them with the pistol. So I got very good at tossing objects where I wanted to hit them in just muscle memory. It's just mm-hmm. like anything, you know, muscle memory. Yeah. And, uh, but when he was chipping that golf ball up in the air, one minute it would be 14 feet high. The next minute it'd be like four feet high going 90 miles an hour. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you never knew where he was going to chip it, but that's probably the most difficult shot that I ever pulled off. It's like one of my first videos and it has no, vi- no views and that's, that's totally okay. But that's probably Even though you're like, I, I worked so hard. <laughs> yes, I worked very hard for that shot. <laughs> nice. Do you have any future plans? Future plans for supper or like vacation or just trick shots or? I guess, I mean, I would say whatever kind of, you know, had to do with the industry. But I mean, if you want to tell me what you're eating for dinner or your next vacation, I'm all ears. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get some. This is not a plug, but I'm gonna get some Papa John's pizza tonight. I'm gonna be honest with you. I've been craving pizza all week. No, I, which yeah, one? I've wait, got, hold on. Which pizza do you get? Papa John's. Yeah. There's there's two. There's two that that's kind of like my go to. I like the Supreme. All right, I like Supreme, but yeah. I also like the Hawaii. I'm one of those weird people who love pineapple. pineapple. That's so. That's what I talked about on my last show. 
my last show or two shows ago and they were like pineapple and pizza or no. And I was like, honestly, I don't care. I totally did. I will eat pizza every day, all day. Don't even care. I am the same way. Like pizza I, and I Mexican said that I'm food. Pizza. Well, pizza, pizza and Mexican food, I can literally like live off of. Yep. Yep. I'm the same way. And I said that I'm craving pizza this week. I've already had pizza twice this week. So yeah. This I, I honestly could week. eat it like every day. It's crazy. Yeah, it's, that's how I keep my girlish figure. Yeah. Well, I have no idea how I'm even like still losing weight because <laughs> I, it, my eating habits are horrible. <laughs> but yeah, I've got, man, I'm, I'm sitting in my gun room right now and on the sofa and I've got three, three firearms that I cannot tell you about. You will find out at SHOT Show, um, but I've had them for, for quite a while. They're pretty cool. And, uh, but yeah, I did pick up the new Chris Vector 22 the other day. Which, and Which we're yeah, going to talk about finished. here shortly. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's, that's probably my next video that I'll be putting out next week. And there's something really, 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 really cool too coming out next week that I really can't mention. It's probably the biggest thing that's, that's ever happened to me in the, in the shooting industry. You know what it is, but I, I can't talk about it right now. It's going to be released at shot show. Yeah, I know. Finally, you shared something with me, which by the way, I, I, I oh, we can't I, say I, that. Like, you know, I, I felt bad because, you know, he was like, with the whole you Ruger know, can't thing. you tell me anything that's going to go on at shot show? And I'm like, no. NDAs are for real, man. I can't well, tell you. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Although, but, but I can show you this and you're like, oh, that's cool. And I'm like, well, thank you. Yeah. And I'm excited for you. I, I will say though, when I was at the Dallas Safari Club show, I stopped over mm -hmm. by Ruger. There was only a few, like literally like five companies that I recognized. It was like Trigicon, Sig and Ruger. And so I was, I wanted to check out the, the new, you know, five, seven pistol and I didn't make like I didn't talk to anybody there. I was just like fooling around with it. And the guy like, uh, that was standing there, one of the employees, he's like, are you a competitive shooter? And I was like, no. And he's like, oh, you could just tell because of the way you're handling the gun. And I was like, well, I mean, I'm in the industry, you know, like I've. That is I'm one of the cheesiest pickup lines at a gun show <laughs> I've ever heard in my life. I mean, I like to think that, you know, I wasn't like picking it up, finger on the trigger, don't know how to test out <laughs> the trigger. everybody. <laughs> yeah. Or like, you know how people like try to test out the trigger and they have no idea that it's like, okay, pull on the trigger, rack the slide, let it off easy, feel that reset, and then go ahead and press it again. And nobody yeah. realizes that. They just think that, oh, okay, I'll rack the slide and then press it and then it's done. And you can't really no. get an idea of, you know, the trigger. And so, I mean, I would like to think that the things that I was doing was impressive, but then I told him, I was like, yeah, you know, I have the podcast Gun Funny. And he's like, oh, yeah, I've heard of that. And then he asked uh, the PR guy to come over and meet me. And they're they're like, yeah, we should get you one of the – we'll send you out one of the 5.7 pistols. And I was like, yeah, I saw, you know, 22 Plinkster with – with them. And I was like, Oh, cool. Thanks for letting me know. What's the point of being friends with you? So I like totally like <laughs> name dropped you just to be like, Oh yeah, we're buds. We're like, yeah, we're like this. And, uh, and then oh, they were, man. they that were like, funny. yeah, they were talking about you saying that like you made some sort of shot with a 22 and, and I was like, Oh yeah, I watched that. And I'm in the back of my mind. I didn't watch that. Nope. No idea. No, what talking yeah, about. I knew you didn't. I knew you didn't. So yeah, they, <laughs> I, you know, a lot of people think that I work for Ruger and I work for Smith and Wesson because I, you know, or Savage or, yeah. or any of these companies. I don't work for, you know, yeah. that I am not an employee. They do not pay me to shoot their guns. Mm -hmm. And, you know, but according, you just read the comments, like, yeah, Ruger's paying you to say that. No, oh, I'm, I know. I'm not. I am, I am 100% truthful in every single video that I have ever, ever, well, you have ever to made. be, you have to yeah. be because the minute you lose your credibility, your honesty and your, you know, whatever you're saying is ultimately your business. So the minute exactly that people right. don't take you seriously or they're like, oh, this guy is just full of it, they're not going to take your review seriously. They're not going to trust what you're saying and they're not going to, as a result, buy that product. And you're exactly right. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to mention any uh, brands or any kind of firearms, but, you know, since I shoot guns for a living, I get a lot of companies wanting to send me firearms mm -hmm. and, you know, I'll tell them, I'm like, listen, I, I'll make 
I'll, I'll take it out. I'll put 500 to a thousand rounds to it. If I like it, I will tell the world that I like it. And it's not that, that my opinion matters more than anybody else's opinion, but my time matters. Absolutely. And once you start making a video and you know, you got to get a cameraman over here and then editing, you know, it, it's sometimes a day and a half, two days mm -hmm. worth of work. And, you know, a lot of times, you know, I'll just say, Hey, I didn't like your gun, so I'm not going to make a video on it. And they're like, well, what didn't you like about it? But I, I've done a lot of, you know, project development for a lot of firearms in the company. You know, a lot of times like the Smith and Wesson victory, you know, I had that gun a year before it was released, putting it through its paces for Smith and Wesson, doing a lot of stuff with it. The Mark four, I had it quite a bit, you know, beforehand and, you know, a lot of this stuff I've got to keep my mouth shut and I just want to tell the world about it. Like, mm -hmm. and they'll, and the funny thing is people will, people will send me messages. I don't know how many messages I got in probably about a, I, I probably had the Mark four about two months before they released it. And I was putting this thing through its paces, man. Like uh, all of them that they sent me and people are like, Hey, I'm fixing to build a Mark three. You know, should I get this barrel on this trigger? I'm just like, can you hold off for a little while? Right. Isn't like, that so well, hard are to they say coming out with a different barrel? I'm like, yeah, they're coming out with a different, just hold out to, to you see something on my, on my YouTube or Facebook or Instagram page about, about that product. And yeah. it's just like, I want to tell them, but I can't, I've got yeah. to keep my mouth shut. Which is, that's nice of you to do because guns are expensive. You know, you can yeah, even, they are. I mean, you're still looking at at least like $200 if, you know, like on the low end. So that's nice of you. Yeah, you are. And you know what a lot of people don't know, you know, about me, I've mentioned it maybe once in a video, but Years and years and years before YouTube, I, w I was a collector. I would buy sometimes, you know, four or five, six guns a week. This was years before I started doing YouTube. You know, I, I did security for a living and I was in eight to 10 different houses every single day of my life. Is that how you collected so all the guns? In, that, that, you're exactly <laughs> right. I, I would go in and I would walk by an old, you know, walnut gun cabinet or something. I would see like an old, you know, 1906 Winchester or, or something in there, or, you know, something they've got hung above the door frame on 16 penny nails, like an old Browning A5 or something like that. And I start talking about it and I'm like, well, if you ever want to sell it, let me know. What do you get me for it? How about 50 bucks? All right. Yeah. Take it. It's yours all the time. So I have like the internet just sees the new guns that I have. They don't know like all the old cool Winchesters and old uh, Marlins and all kinds of old stuff that I have that I had, I don't even have time to make videos on cause I'm making it on new stuff, mm -hmm. but I've got some really cool, really cool, awesome guns, like old Colts, you know, dating back to the 1860s and Dang. all kinds of cool stuff. It's crazy. Yeah. That's actually, cause I mean, when I went to the Dell Safari club show, I mean, there was a lot of old guns and I was like, I have no idea. I don't know anything about old guns. I only know, you know, just the more modern guns from when I started in the industry a few years ago. Yeah, I, I used to be so obsessed with it that I used to memorize serial numbers. Like like dates and time periods of which guns, like the, the, the perfect example, Winchester Model 70s, you know, uh, the Rifleman's Rifle. Anybody that collects Model 60s wants a pre-64. Well, I know that the serial number is under 700,000. Anything under 700,000, you get a pre-64. The 3030, uh, Winchester, the model 94, anything under 2,700,000 is pre 64. And, and like, then I used to know, I can't remember the 1974, pre 1964 on the Belgian made Brownings. And, you know, I, I used to memorize all that stuff. So when I had a chance to buy a gun, I already knew off the top of my head, I didn't have to do any research, you know, when the gun was made, uh, and things of that nature, because it, it, it just made for a more fluent transaction. Hmm. Yeah. That makes sense. This might be my longest podcast ever. I'm so, sorry. Yeah, Am I talking like, too much? Yeah, I mean, you know, no, it's all good. It's all good information. I actually, I really enjoy talking to you. But to kind of wrap up the deconstructing the industry, can you just tell listeners where they can find you on the internet? Yeah, sure. Uh, so YouTube, it is just 22 Plinkster, 22 P-L-I-N-K-S-T-E-R. Uh, that's on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And if you're into hunting and fishing and other redneck stuff, you can find me on my second YouTube channel um, called Plinkster Outdoors, P-L-I-N-K-S-T-E-R Outdoors. Oh, nice. I didn't know you had that channel. Yeah, a lot of, I, I, it's a small channel. It's like 40,000 subscribers, but it's, I, none of it's monetized. It's just, it's the, not that 22 Plinkster is not the real me, but the Plinkster Outdoors is the redneck me, yeah. more redneck me. 
All right. Well, speaking of outdoors, Sportsman's Guide, they have all, I mean, they have everything covered as far as like when it comes to outdoors, but it's so funny because I was like looking on their website and I saw a, it's called a guide gear snowblower cab. So I think I talked about my first snow blowing experience, which was this year. Um, so far twice I've had to shovel snow off my driveway, which is the first time in my life. And the first time that I tried it, I used a snow blower. That was like one of the first things that I bought when I bought my house. And it was a disaster because even though I was pointing like the little, you know, the, the thing where it, it puts the direction of the snow, it still was like blowing back on me. So I was covered in snow and it was horrible. It was the worst experience ever. Even like when I got back into my house and I just like took off the first layer of clothes and I walked past my mirror and I'm like, what is that? Like what's white on my head? And it turns out I had a little bun and then like a beanie on. Well, the back of my bun was like covered in snow. (laughs) So I could have used one of these snowblower cabs and uh, yeah, my mind's like forever changed. I mean, my life just changed. I didn't know that they made these. So yeah, there's that. If you guys find anything or if you want to, you know, protect yourself while you're snow blowing, uh, I would definitely recommend head on over to Sportsman's Guide. Use the code GUNFUNNY20 and that will get you $20 off $100 or more. And also, Dave, you know, you could have chimed in a little bit. On the snowblower? Yeah. I've never snowblowed. I, I'm, I'm a, I'm, I am live in Tennessee. <laughs> I've never snowblowed. So, <laughs> I've never snow blowed. I, I like I've shoveled snow like once or twice. Okay, so, good. So I don't feel uh, so dumb. If it, it if it snows an inch in Tennessee, it'll you know, melt. We'll shut the state down. <laughs> right. We'll call the national guard out. Yeah. Well, typically if it snows here, it usually melts within 24 hours. But there was two times where it didn't. And here in Colorado, I don't know if it's like nationwide, but if you don't shovel at least your sidewalk and somebody falls, you can get sued. And I mean, I'm not trying what? to brag. Yeah. I'm not trying to brag or anything, but I have the nicest house on the block. So I know damn well people would probably try to purposely fall on my sidewalk because that's just how people are nowadays. Really? <laughs> yeah. What's your address? I'm going to take a plane trip out there <laughs> and fall on your sidewalk. <laughs> All right. Like, Dave, it's 65 degrees outside. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, in other news of uh, AF things. Stupid. Funny. Cool. Interesting. Awesome. As f- Never mind. AF. All right. So recently, a Pennsylvania attorney general, uh, Josh Shapiro, he issued a legal opinion that 80, 80% lowers our firearms. So right now, the current definition uh, in Pennsylvania state is anything that may, quote unquote, may readily be restored, which he wasn't happy with that definition. So as a result, he settled on a basic test for what readily converted means, and his opinion takes these factors into account. So it has to include time, ease, expertise, equipment, availability, expense, and feasibility. And the attorney general uh, decided that anything that requires less than a master gunsmith, 13 plus hours, and 65000 to convert into a, a firearm is in fact a firearm which is like ridiculous. So like really anything could be a firearm. Wow. Yeah. Isn't That's that no crazy? Bueno. I mean, literally I just look at all these States, like even my state included Colorado, which used to be like, so two way friendly. And now it's definitely turned into like more of a, a purple state. But I mean, like take like Virginia now, Pennsylvania, like all of these States, even Washington, like they're all just, all of these laws, I mean, they're insane. And you kind of wonder, like, how are they even, how are they even getting passed? Like, especially because the verbiage is so like general and it, it could be anything. It opens up, you know, for interpretation at that point, And that can mean anything. And that's what's scary about these laws. Mm-hmm. So people need to get involved, get involved. Yeah, absolutely. And it's always been our right that we could make our own firearm. Oh yeah. That's always been, been you know, so now, so it's like, again, they're just kind of like stepping on our rights that were already given to us, but they're taking back, you know, it's, it's just, it's so frustrating. Yeah. Their rights and they, they get the term rights and privileges mixed up. Mm -hmm. I know. I agree. 
All right, enough about that. Let's talk about Sharps Bros. So I'm not sure how much I can tell you guys about this, but I will give you a little inside information. So right now, John Sharps, he's working on a chassis for the Ruger American Short Action. And I think his plan is to make quite a few chassis for different models. Right now he has one for the, the Hawa, which you should check out. It's super, it's super nice. And, um, and it takes a lot of the AR parts. If you want to go and check that out, go to sharpsbros.com. Q and A. There's no such thing as a stupid question. Just kidding. Visit gunfunny.com forward slash contact to submit yours. All right. So if you guys ever have any questions, just feel free to go to gunfunny.com, click on the contact us form and fill that out and just ask your question and I'll answer it on the show. Today's question is what is your shoe size? <laughs> and that's kind of awkward. I feel like some of the listeners have like foot fetishes. <laughs> Are they asking you or me? Uh, they're asking both of us. <laughs> so you go first, and I feel like you're going to be super uh, embarrassed if you're like super large or super small. <laughs> there's um, like, there's really no right answer. Yeah, I, I, I wear a 14. Okay, that's pretty big. In, in, in ladies. Oh. I mean men. <laughs> Yeah, you know what I meant. Yeah. How tall are you? Six foot six. Okay. So then that's like, because everyone always like growing up, people are like, oh, you have big feet. And I'm like, I'm tall. Like I'm 5'8". So obviously like I need to be able to balance. But my shoe You're size. 5'8"? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is pretty tall. My yeah. daughter, she's uh, she's 14. She's 5'10 and a half. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's poor baby. It's, well, so this is, too. this is what sucks is like being a tall female you don't want to really date anybody who's shorter than you. It just feels weird. It's awkward. And I don't typically want to date anybody who's even my height because if I wear high heels, then I'm towering over them. And it's, again, it's just awkward. It just, and it's, it's weird. I don't even know why, you know, why it feels so awkward, especially because, you know, today, like you see plenty of couples that, you know, the guy is much shorter than the female. But for me, it just seems just still kind of, you know, just awkward. When I was in the dating game, I never dated anybody taller than me. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Although I have seen some couples where, you know, like the guy's like 6'6 six, six and the female's like 6'4. I was in Costco the yeah. other day and I saw that and I was like, wow. I know a 6'10 and a 6'8 couple. Oh, wow. That's insane. Yeah. Their son was seven foot and their other daughter was 6'8. Man, that so, is yeah. so crazy. Well, I just know that, uh, when you're a tall female dating, it's, you know, as it is like finding a nice, decent guy is, is hard enough, but then finding someone who is taller than you. So I already feel for your daughter. So maybe, you know, yeah, yeah. she's got her first boyfriend and she's, you know, they've been dating for about four months and that's actually really long about for an, her age. It, it, it actually, it is. He's a good kid. And, um, when she was telling me about him like four and a half months ago, you know, I was, I was drilling her with questions. I'm like, he's a good kid, good family. You know, mm -hmm. what's he do? You know, he loves to hunt. He loves to fish. I'm like, well, that's good. And she goes, Oh, also he has 556 acres. I'm like, don't mess this up. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't mess this up, baby. I'm like, dad needs a new place to turkey. <laughs> and you said, how old is she? 10? No, she's 14. Oh, 14. Okay. I was like, yeah, 10's yeah, a little young. Ten. Now I've got 11 year old too. So but that's a man. That's, that's, there's seven podcasts of worth of information right there. Right. So two daughters. Yeah. Do you have any sons? Two girls. No, I do not. So my oldest is kind of the boy I didn't have. So she, uh, she loves sports and she loves to shoot and she loves to hunt and fish and kayak and all that other good stuff. And my younger one, she's just a princess. All right. Well, that's I'm awesome. sorry I set a record for the longest podcast. Um, almost. I think this, the people that actually, I think the, the second or maybe the first still would be Skillset Magazine. And I don't know if you're familiar with the guys from Skillset, Jen or, uh, Jason and Ben, but Jason, boy, can he talk. And I was just like, it, I mean, he was just going on and on and on. And like, he's super entertaining. I really like those guys. But I could barely even get any questions 
you know, out and it just kept going <laughs> on and on. And usually if it's good content, like I don't care. I'm not like going to be like, okay, yeah. guys, we're done with this. Like we got to wrap it up, move forward. Um, you know, if it's good information, but and then there's sometimes where you get guests where it's like pulling teeth and you're just like, so, you know, did you just start your company? Yeah. Okay. You want to tell me about that? (laughs) (laughs) I've, I've made a few videos with, with people like that before. One video we get about, I guess I introduce myself and I enter, you know, in the product, whatever have you. And, Mm -hmm. uh, I look over to my buddy and I'm just like, it was just an awkward, like three second pause. And I'm like, say something, Dan, anything. And he's like, Oh, okay. Yeah. But (laughs) luckily that's when editing does play a great role. (laughs) Oh, but I left it in there. I left it in there because it was hilarious. So, oh, nice. But yeah. So the quite now, can I ask you a question? Uh huh. So, or, or am I allowed to ask you a question on your podcast? Yeah, of course. So, when when is going to be the twenty two Plinkster versus Ava shoot off competition? When is that going to happen? So I'm thinking because you're in Tennessee. If it mm-hmm. doesn't happen before then, I think it's going to happen at the NRA. Because I am going to go to Nashville for the NRA show. Are you? Yeah. I don't think I'm going to attend this year. I mean, trust me. It's such, I, a, it's such a long drive. It's like 25 minutes away from my house. Oh, you're right. It's not worth it, especially for the NRA. <laughs> <laughs> it's, no, you I'll know, be there with bells on. It's tough because like I don't – I've gotten to the point where like I barely support the NRA. And I did renew my membership which I don't think after this, I think I'm done, but I renewed it just so that I could vote. And at this point, I'm like, I just feel like everything's sort of a scam. And even if, you know, I do vote, I don't even know if it's counted, but I'm just, I really am fed up with them, but it is nice to, it's kind of like a smaller shot show. And then you also get to interact with like, you know, the public, not just people in the industry. And so I like that aspect. So you know, I'm, I'm definitely going to go. So with that said, I'm thinking, and that's what in April, uh, it's either the end of April or the first of May. I don't see that's, that's man. I've got to talk to somebody in a because they schedule that right during the middle of turkey season every year. Hmm. And that's like the best time to turkey hunt. It's like the last week of April, first week of May and they schedule NRA. They're like, why can't you have it in like March when nothing's right. going on? All right, fine. I'll go hunting with you. Okay. We'll make that video. <laughs> We'll see. Oh my word. <laughs> Even though I've never that gone was, hunting before. You see, yeah. And see, I can tell you're from out like West too, because you're pronouncing a G on the end of your words. So you, so say, what do you do when you get in a boat and you cast a, 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 a like a line in the water? What's that called? I don't know. I would say, I would just say casting a reel. No, no. Like the, the whole process. Fishing. Like, what are you trying to? Okay, what'd you say? Fishing. Okay. Okay. So, if you get in your truck and you put a tent in the back and you go out to the woods, what is that called? Camping. Yeah, you pronounce the G's. See, in the South, we don't pronounce G's. So it's hunting, fishing, shooting, camping. You know, mudding. You know, there's no G's, and I can use. Well, I don't I know if it's. I don't know if it's a, a Western thing or an Eastern thing. It's a North and a Northwestern thing. Huh. So people in, like if you're not from the south, like below the Mason Dixon line, like we hard in, in normal conversation. Now, when writing, of course, I'll put a G on the end of things, and the uh, but normal conversations, it's when you're just like says, and you do you G? say y'all? Oh yeah, I say y'all and fixing and everything else. Like we're fixing to go to the store and like the, the people make well, fun of me so much in my my videos for my dialect and my you, in my grammar. I'm like I know how to write. You know I'm educated. It's just normal dialect. It makes me sound, well, that kind of goes back to what we couldn't talk about on your podcast that's coming out. But <laughs> so, but yeah, people, people make fun of my dialect all the time. Yeah. I could, I could see that. So, but I mean, it's, it's yeah, like, you can see that. so you know what? When I go on your show, I'm be like, Hey, y'all, I'm Ava and I'm here to go hunting. I can blend oh, in. We could, we could have, we, we could have fun with it. So, so what do you uh, think? You gotta, should we, come up. should we do April, May, or should we do before that? It's, I, I start traveling in March, but the only bad thing about March weather is it may be 70 degrees one day. It may have snow on the ground. You know, you, you never know. With and what March. about, what about April um, and May? And is it humid? Am I going to like, are my Jew curls going to start showing? <laughs> yeah, it's 
Tennessee is one of the most humid states you'll ever be in your life. Okay, that's uh, great. It's not quite as bad as Louisiana and South Mississippi, but Tennessee is it, it's pretty bad. So especially around it, humidity doesn't get bad until probably about uh, the end of May, all the way to probably about August. All right, so we're gonna um, we're so definitely gonna have to do it like April, maybe of May. first week. Yeah, like middle of so, May is like cutting it. Middle middle of May, we can make that happen. So it's going to be 80 degrees outside by then, maybe 85. And, you know, you come up with the ideas what you want to, like, us have competition. We can do speed. We can do accuracy. We can do accuracy with speed. Why do I feel like I'm just so, going to yeah. lose? No, no, no. Ever Anybody that comes <laughs> to my house, everybody's a winner. Oh, okay. <laughs> so there are no losers. You know, and plus, I, I listen, I, I control the editing, so – I can make it look like whoever wins wins, whoever <laughs> loses loses. So, but I've had some, I've had a lot of people up here, you know, that, that has shot and competed and I've won a few and they've won a few. So, uh, hmm. I'm never going to invite Tim Harms and Military Arms Channel back because he cheats every time he comes up here. How did he so, cheat? Uh, uh, he just cheats. He gets in my head oh, and just, gotcha. he picks his own gun. He's like, yeah, let's shoot a golf ball at a hundred yards with an Uzi. And it's his Uzi. He knows where it's sighted in at. I don't even get any practice, practice shots. And he hits it. And I'm like, how am I, how in the world am I supposed to know where the point of aim? And it was like four feet high. And he knew it. So um, so he tricks you. Yeah, he tricks me. And then he says, yeah, I'm a better shooter. He's just a wash up, you know, YouTube trash now. And I'm just like, Tim, no, you cheated. <laughs> so, but in, he'll, he's the kind of person like he'll stand off to the side and make the glare of his watch off the sun in my eyes right before I get ready to shoot kind of a person. Oh man. Yeah. Don't worry. I won't play that dirty. So, hey, it's okay. It makes for a good video. You know, you come up, you come up with four or five shots that you think you can pull off within a hundred shots. And, um, I will try to match it or not match it. So, okay. All right, but, yeah, that you know, sounds you're fun. You're welcome. You're welcome to come up anytime you want to. And then we can go over and bother Hickok 45. He's just right down the road. Yeah, perfect. Okay. All right, uh, moving on, we're going to talk about Polymer 80. So uh, I am going to be at the Polymer 80 booth at SHOT Show on Tuesday, 11 a.m. and that is booth number 10325. In the meantime, head on over to polymer80.com, check out their products. If you see something you like, use the code GUNFUNNY and that will get you 15% off. Tactic Talk. Discussing popular guns and gear. Love it? Hate it? Find out now. So I actually did not see your video uh, with the Chris Vector. I didn't know that you had one. I just no, saw. I don't, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I just saw that it came out, and I was like, "Oh, I'm totally going to talk about this because it's a 22 and it's right up your alley." Haha. <laughs> <laughs> because remember when I was <laughs> yes, talking to you? Scares me. Remember when I was talking to you? And I was like, you said something, and I was like, "Yeah, well, you probably don't have the muscle to shoot anything larger than a 22." I said something that's, to that that's extent. Correct. Center fire scares the dickens out of me. I, <laughs> it, you know, I can shoot a nine millimeter. My hand will be bruised for a week. I'm sure. So you have one of the Chris vectors heading your way, correct? No, I've, it's actually sitting right beside. Me. Oh, okay. So, so you just haven't shot it yet. Oh no, I've shot it a bunch. I just okay. Well, what the heck? You just said that yet. you don't have one, and now you're saying that it's like right next to you. So what well, is I it? I don't have a video out on it yet. Oh, okay. So, okay. And I really don't have. I really don't have like a 100%. I've got a probably about an 80% opinion on it right now. So there are a few things that are going to sway my opinion 20% either way. But yeah, it, it's, well, it, it's hold on. Cool. Wait, you, know, you can't, you can't just oh, say oh, that. Sorry. You can't just say that and not tell me what those things are. That's going to sway your opinion. Yeah. So you mean you, you actually want to know that? Yeah, of course. Okay. All right. The only downfall that I see on it right now is the sights. It's got regular battle flip up sights. Oh, I hate those. And yeah. And the problem with those, those particular kind of sights, you can't, you can't draw a fine beam, you know, especially at targets out, you know, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 yards. You can't get a fine beam. I've got a, uh, I think that target 18 by 24 still target that I can shoot off my back porch at 150 yards. 
and that front post almost covers up, well, it covers up two thirds of that 18 by 24 plate at 100, 150 yards. Wow. So I don't know if how the accuracy on it is. Um, I haven't tested the accuracy because I can't get a fine bead. I can shoot, I can hit steel, whatever with it. Um, I've got a particular optic coming in today, which I don't know if it's released or not. So I really can't talk about that too much, but it is a red dot and it's a two MOA red dot. So I'm going to put that on top of it instead of using the battle sights mm-hmm. and uh, see what kind of precision I can get out of it. If the precision is there, like, I mean, if it's just Ruger 1022 bare bone out of the box, accurate as that, I, I will give it good reviews. I've put hmm, probably seven to 800 rounds through it at this point. Uh, suppressed and non-suppressed. I've tried subsonic, standard, high velocity, stangers. Um, I, I've tried everything that I can possibly uh, throw at it. And it has went bang every time I pulled the trigger. Really? So it has not had one malfunction. That's surprising because... proprietary magazines. I mean, Go well, ahead. it's just surprising that you haven't had any issues just because, I mean, the gun itself can be super reliable, but... Like 22s, you're always going to have, I mean, you're going to most likely going to experience a misfire, like at least yep. one every 20 rounds. Well, if you're shooting anything but uh, CCI and federal, you will experience misfires. Yeah, you see well, how CCI. I threw ambassador plug yeah, in? yeah, yeah. I do think so CCI. Like <laughs> I know. I was like, oh, okay, that's great. Although I do think CCI does make probably the best 22. CCI, CCI does make the best rim fire in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I've been, Man, I've been shooting that stuff since I was well, five years old. That's all my daddy would buy, CCI. But yeah, CCI. So you, so you still didn't have any misfires? No, I didn't. The only thing that I haven't ran through it that I need to try is bulk camo, and that's pretty much the ultimate test. Mm-hmm. You know, your 36 grain, 1,250 feet per second bulk ammo. Uh, if, it can, if it can cycle that and it's reliable, the gun's going to give it a big thumbs up. Man, I sound like Such when I said the big thumbs up, but it's going to get a good review from me because here's the thing. Your Chris Vectors are going to start off at twelve, thirteen hundred dollars $1,300, you know, for your center fires. Yeah. And then they're going to go up to like twenty two, twenty three hundred dollars $2,300, depending on the options and different things you want on them. And I own three Chris Vectors, so I like the platform. I, I just think they're neat. Not all guns that I have are practical. Mm-hmm. You know, I like unpractical, you know, unpractical is unpractical, unpractical. Is that a word? I don't think it is, but we're going to go for it. Okay. Things, th- how about, let me go full redneck. Things that ain't practical, I still like. <laughs> so, uh, but, I, but I feel I like that's, like, I mean, if you're like a true gun connoisseur, you get to that point where like you have like the typical staple guns, the 1911, the shotgun, the AK, the AR, you know, the nine millimeter pistol. And then you get to a point where you're like, all right, well, that's cool. But what can I get that's just like, you know just sort of yeah. mind blowing like it has no purpose it's just cool it, 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 you know you're exactly right and you know this day and age i'm going to say it and i'm probably people are probably going to be yelling at their computers or any devices that they're going to be maybe yelling at when i say this but you know it's 2020 revolvers for the most part are not really practical mm-hmm. um totally. when it comes to you know self defense now Will they do the job? Yes. Yes, they'll do the job. I love revolvers. I have, I don't know, I have 50 or 60 revolvers. I'm a, I love revolvers. But honestly, if I have to choose between a 38 five shot revolver or a, you know, a nine millimeter that holds 18 rounds, mm-hmm. guess which one I'm going to pick? I agree. So for self defense or to carry. So, but the, the Chris Vector, I think it kind of falls into that, in my opinion. You know, it's, it's a cool gun. It's a very cool gun. It's, full, it's a cool design. You know, it's supposed to be a submachine gun, but unfortunately, the government doesn't allow us to own, you know, full auto Chris Vectors. But the 22, it's, you know, I think the MSRP on them is going to be like 649. Yep. So real world price, about 575. You can't, you can't just say, so, I think it's going to be, and then give me an exact number. If you were like, oh, I think it's going to be six fifty. <laughs> the exact number the, of the MSRP is going to be six hundred and forty nine dollars. Real world price, you're probably going to be able to find them around five fifty to five seventy five. Yeah, which is a great um, price. Yeah, and you can own a Chris Vector. You yeah. can shoot it all day long for ten bucks. Uh, yeah. You can suppress it very easily, half a twenty eight. And it, you know, I'm just waiting on to hear about the accuracy. You know, yeah, I'm just waiting on that red dot. 
And then it comes with a 10 round magazine, although 30 round magazines will be available. It's so weird because like all these companies, you know, I kind of feel like there wasn't a lot of innovation this past year with gun companies. It was like, all right, let's take the exact same model and we're going to make it 22. Like how many companies, you know, like, I mean, Ruger basically did that with their, it's the LCP. LCP Um, too. Glock 19. Okay. Let's chamber in 22. Chris Vector. It's just in, I guess, you know, and I think that it's, uh, it'll definitely sell and it has its place, but it's just weird that so many companies just kind of jumped on board with the whole 22 long rifle. And I've noticed that like most of these magazines are 10 round magazines. Yes. Why is you know, that? The, well, state, a lot of it, a lot of it's engineering. Usually with a 22 rim fire, 10 rounds is your minimum. And not only that, that, you know, with the springs, the light springs have got to be in, in the magazines and the followers and things of that nature, 10 rounds is pretty easy to do. Anytime you try to take a magazine more than 10 rounds mm-hmm. with a 22, there are some, there's some engineering involved since these are proprietary magazines. Chris makes these magazines. I don't know if like the Glock 44 magazine will fit the Chris Vector. I don't think so. I'm waiting on to get my Glock 44 and find out the guy. Chris Vector didn't even know, but Chris Vector's take Glock magazines and it looks a lot like a Glock magazine. So the Glock 44 may or may not work. I don't think it will, but I'm going to try it. But you know, the reason why these companies are doing this, uh, with the 22 LR is 22 LR is the most common round in the world. All right. You know, you go overseas and stuff. The only gun that you, that you can, you know, you, you can own is a 22 LR. You know, that's the only caliber that you can own. And, you know, there, I can't tell you how many hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of round that people shoot in 22 LR mm-hmm. and conversion kits are nothing new. Uh, they make AKs, you know, 22 LRs. T- how many companies make 22 LRs are dedicated, you know, AR 15s? Mm-hmm. You know, they have scars that are like 22 LR. 1911s. Well, I also was thinking that maybe this is also a way to. The, oh, I'm sorry. Did yeah. You, it, it, wait, did you? Were you yeah, talking the it, whole time? Yeah. Oh, what happened? I guess you cut out again. Well, my my <laughs> my phone is blowing. And meanwhile, I'm like, don't worry, I got this. Wait, <laughs> I'll I'll jump in. Yeah. So, <laughs> but you know, the 22, the everybody and their uncles making 22 LRs you know, this year, because you've got to remember this stuff's probably been in development for like two years, Mm -hmm. three years. And prior, you couldn't hardly find 22 ammo. Now there's a plethora of 22 ammo on every shelf at every sporting goods store. So these companies are finally getting back into making uh rimfire, you know, I I wouldn't really say conversions or trainers, but scaled down models of the originals. Mm -hmm. Well, and then I also was thinking that maybe they're also trying to um, get more of the youth involved in shooting since that's Mm -hmm. typically what you would start off shooting. I know my first gun was a 22. What was your first gun? Oh, it was horrible. It was a Sig Mosquito and it would only shoot the CCI high velocity mini mag. Yeah. CCI mini mags. That's the only thing you can feed that thing. Only thing. Yeah. It was just, I still have it just because, you know, I'm, it was my first gun. I'm not going to sell it, but I mean, it was, it was like a question for you. Yes. Has the front side ever fell off? It has not. Okay. All right. You got one of the newer ones. Yeah. And it was like a, a deep purple kind of glittery. And stupidly, nice. that's why, that's why I wanted it also, which now it's like, I hate when people buy the gun based on color. Cause I'm like, you could just buy whatever gun you like. And then later on you can get it Cerakoted. But I guess, you know, even like seven years ago, it wasn't Cerakoting wasn't as popular. So yeah, you're right. So, uh, yeah. So it's like purple and I just, right now I just use it for, uh, class purposes, like as a training aid, just to kind of, you know, explain like traditional double action and stuff like that. All right, so this is what I need from you today. Uh huh. I need a picture on Instagram of your twenty-two pistol, oh, your purple one. For why? Just post it. I just got off the podcast to twenty-two Plinkster, and he wanted to see the purple Sig Mosquito. And are you going to share it? Uh, let's not get carried away. You know, um, I mean, I'm putting this, just, I'm like putting this out here. Everyone's going to think like I'm super weak because I had a 22 <laughs> for my first gun and it was purple. It's not even the black one. 
Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> I do, excuse me. I do have a purple gun though. I do have a purple gun. I have a purple Ruger charger. Okay. Yeah, I've seen so, those. Yeah, so I, I can't really say anything about your purple gun. Yeah. Yeah, and you I, know, a lot has changed over the years. Too. And you have a what? Do what? I said a lot has changed over the years. Now I, I That's like, true. I honestly, I like, uh, like FD and OD, ODG, but other than that, I don't really like colors on, on my guns or if it's like camo or something. Okay. Do you like the scar 17 and FDE? I do. With the 50 shades of FDE. Uh huh. Yeah. It's got, I'm looking at mine. Like there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different, different shades. shades of FDE on that gun. But look at like, uh, so Q, you know, look at like the guns that he makes, like the honey badger. Mm-hmm. They're not all like, they're not consistent. And so like that look is kind of trending a little bit. That's what everybody keeps telling me. Yeah. You got to give so, it the time. I'm just, yeah, I've, I've, well, I've given it six months. I've had it for six months and, um, <laughs> and you're like, I still don't uh, like it. <laughs> I don't know. I, my OCD, it makes my OCD just go crazy and I really don't have that bad of OCD. Whereas um, I do. And I'm just like, Oh no, it's, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> no big deal. They were just trying to save money and they got, you know, got every part Cerakote in different places. No big deal. <laughs> I don't, I don't understand, but that's, if that's the trendy thing and that's what all, if that will get a hipster into shooting, you know, let's, let's do it. Right. All right. On that note, talking about hipsters, you know how hipsters love their coffee? Well, I wouldn't say I'm super hipster, but I do love coffee and it is the one thing that I do like religiously every day. The minute I wake up, I think about coffee. So our newest advertiser is Trigger Brewed. And this morning I drank a cup of the Boogaloo blend, which they have really funny names like gourmet shit. Let's see, illegal in California. So it's like kind of, I mean, definitely clever names for each, uh, each flavor. But I got to say, like, you know, a lot of people just buy it because it might be a funny name, but the coffee is actually really good. It's definitely like really good quality, really fresh. I don't, I'm not the one, I haven't gotten like so hipster where I like grind up my own beans, but even just like opening it, like the aroma just like fills up my house. Like it's, you. that's how fresh it is. Nice. So I definitely recommend you guys check it out at triggerbrewed.com. That's triggered with an ED brew.com. Use the code gunfunny and that's going to get you 20% off. All right. So now wrapping up. Last thing is iTunes reviews. If you guys haven't left an iTunes review, please do so. Um, I think I only have like five left to read. So, you know, if you haven't done so, you enjoy the show, I'd really appreciate a review. First review is from 22 Cheapster. See, that's that you could have had that name. No, that guy follows me on Instagram. <laughs> he I follows read some of me. his comments. <laughs> he follows me and he's a Patreon. Awesome. But yeah, that could have been that could have been your name instead of Plankster, you could have been Cheapster. <laughs> Back in back in 1999, you could that could have been my name. It could have been, especially with because you only shoot 22, so it could have been like yes. associated with like cheap. Like, yeah, you you missed like a huge opportunity. All right, so <laughs> I had one job. I know, five stars, awesome show, fun listening to Ava grow with the podcast since I started listening. Kenny Ortega does a great job editing each episode and has been an asset from the day he started. Each guest is unique in and knowledgeable about the gun industry. Second is Justin Paulson, five stars, amazing podcast. I start out every morning or I'm sorry. I start out every Monday morning, waking up at 2 AM. Okay. That sounds horrible. Dreading a long Mm -hmm. two and a half hour early morning uh, ride to work. And I love knowing that I get to listen to Ava, talk to her guests about gun news. Luckily, actually, this podcast might be two and a half hours long, so it might fill up your entire you commute. Sit on the ride back home, <laughs> yeah, right? I've been listening to her since December 2019, and I knew that after listening to one, I had to become a patron and support her amazing work. Please keep up the good work, Ava. You get me through my early Monday morning rides. All right, so out of those two, who would you pick as a winner? I, you know what? I really feel sorry for the guy that has to drive two and a half hours or ride two and a half hours to work. Yeah. That kind of sounds but, like you're going to, you're yeah, going to pick I, the 
the 22 chiefs are because you guys have like I've got similar to, names. I, I've got, I've got to stay loyal. I've got yeah. to stay loyal to my peeps and my followers. So 22 cheapsters, it, it is. Well, both those guys are my loyal followers. So yeah. Yeah. So we, apparently we share, follower than a, I do. yeah, apparently we share loyal followers and maybe they're not as loyal as we think they are now, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I'm not mad. I'm not mad. No, you've got one more than I do. So uh, you can, you have nothing to be, be upset about. I don't know. All right. Wrapping up finally, because we all know Dave <laughs> likes to talk. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually I did. I really enjoyed the show and everything that you had to say. And, you know, you're very like, even though you're kind of hillbilly, you're very well-spoken and, uh, you were definitely, you know, an interesting guest. But with that said, if you guys want to find me, go to gunfunny.com. There's links to everything on there. If you can't get enough, think about becoming a Patreon. So our Facebook group is super active. People are posting on there every day. I get on there. I post more of my personal life on there than I do anywhere else on any type of social media, just because I've at this point kind of feel like the Patreons are sort of like family and I could say whatever and they're not going to judge. Or if they judge, it's cool, but it's not going to leave that group. Also, Blown Deadline is giving away a $300 gift certificate every month to a lucky Patreon. And your Patreon goes to helping uh, keep the show going. It helps to afford an editor who is Kenny Ortega. Really appreciate what you do. So if you guys are interested, just go to patreon.com forward slash gunfunny. And then I also want to thank the $25 Patreons who are Corbin Bonafide, Iraq Veteran 8888, Ryan Morrison, Michael Alexio, Elliot and Mike Pappas, Joe Lyons, Charger Arms, and Justin Paulson. And King of the Patreon is still Jon Snow, and he wants me to say that Operator Tickles is the one who taught John Wick how to kill with a pencil. And do you know who Operator Tickles is? Um, no, I oh. don't. See, I should. And you, and you call me a friend. I'm so sorry. Operator it, Tickles is my dog. I knew that. <laughs> I knew that. Well, can you, do you know my dog's name? It's Maxie. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, she is a he. Okay. And, um, and his name is Henry. Okay. I was close. I knew it ended with an E. <laughs> <laughs> you were way off smalls. Uh, so. I was like, yeah, yeah Max, uh, Max, there we go. That's a pretty common Max. name. Yeah. Let's just, let's just go with Max. Roper. <laughs> All right. Well, now that we know our dog's names. Um, I think it's time to wrap up. So I just want to say once again, thanks so much for spending so much time with me. Hopefully we will plan, you know, a day to record to do a shootout and uh, hopefully I win. I feel pretty confident about it. I'm going to actually go and start practicing right now. Just, you know, just so I don't lose. Okay. But in the meantime, you're, you're, you're go ahead. You're going to do fine. You're going to do fine. Oh, I know. It's, I know. I'm not even oh, questioning it. Oh, you're just getting cocky. <laughs> You went from extremely humble to you know what I'm really going to kick your butt even at your home on your home course. But well, it's you like know what it's like the guy on Instagram today who called me a gun funny and I'm like, or a gun bunny and I was like oh that's funny because I probably know way more about guns than you do and I guarantee I shoot better than you and you know and that would be checkmate. Yeah, like so I'm like come at me, bro. Let's go. So how often do you read comments? Do you read every comment? Um, I try, well, I try to, um, interact with anybody who takes the time to like comment. And honestly, I really don't get that many mean comments. Like it's, it's pretty rare knock on wood, but I will say this last weekend, um, when I went to Dallas, I was hanging out with Colian Noir and we were talking and I told him that I was thinking about getting into politics and he's like, all right, so I'm not trying to dissuade you. But he's like, there's going to be, you're going to like get so many mean comments. Like so many people are going to hate you. And I'm yep. like, eh, I could handle it. It's not really like, I really don't get bent out of shape when somebody like talks crap to me. Like I definitely have thick skin and I will not hesitate to put them in their place. And he's like, yeah, that's how I am. But you know, you read one comment or right, the second comment, 20 comments. But when you're on like the millionth comment and everybody's talking crap, it's going to get to you. Yep. And yep, you're, he's exactly right. And, and I was like, I was like, huh, that actually is a good point. And you so know, actually I told him that. Oh, really? So he was just, yeah, me, me he was regurgitating yeah, advice. We, yeah, I, so he just reused me. He said, I, I had a patent 
Mm-hmm. On, 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 on that advice. But, uh-huh. uh, it just uh, expired. He's just so now he's royalties now. <laughs> right. No, 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 no. It's still active. He, I'm gonna have to call and get royalties as soon as we hang up. Oh so, yeah. Then yeah, uh, definitely collect I, on it. Yeah. I texted him the other night. Well, after I posted that video, video on Instagram of that football player getting his ankles broke by the running back. And I said, this is what I'm going to do with Tocoli and Nora when we play our game of one one <laughs> So yeah, he, he immediately texts me. He's like, bro, what are you smoking? And I'm like, I'm not smoking anything. Reality, man. It's, it's all about reality. Right. So there's going to be that one-on-one game to one day. If I can ever get my knees back where they need to be and it, it won't even be pretty. I'll just dunk on him. And yeah. I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't seem like the athletic type. So I guess that's working in your favor. <laughs> He he's a good shooter, but honestly, uh, he's like five foot two. Yeah, and and I'm six six, so he just tries to shoot the three ball, and I'm just going to throw it into the next county. So <laughs> I'm not I'm not really worried about about his jump shot. Oh gosh, yeah. So, so anyways, I'm rethinking politics, but uh, thanks to Coleon and I guess your advice, but we'll see. We it was see. my advice first, just letting you know. I mean, how do you, so how do you deal with all the comments? Like, do you read every comment or do you just post it and you're like, whatever? Well, since this is like going out publicly mm-hmm. uh, to people, and I know there's people listening to this that follow me, usually on Instagram, I read about 95% of the comments that come in the first 24 hours. Mm-hmm. That's what I do. Um, so, and then on YouTube videos, I'll read the comments for the first 24 to 48 hours. Mm-hmm. Even though I don't respond to them, it doesn't mean that I'm not reading them. Yeah. And after that, yeah, good luck. So if you come on that video six years from now and asking, hey, well, I, I still have people coming from videos that were like four years ago. I'm like, well, now how, how much, how much, what was the length of that barrel of, again or, or something like what was the yeah. trigger pull, the weight? I'm like, dude, that was four years ago. I've, I've shot, you know, a thousand guns since then. I, mm-hmm. I, I don't remember. But yeah, so I, I don't want people upset that I don't respond back. Well, it's like, uh, I, I mean, I, I read it, them. it is hard and you have way more followers than I do. Like I'm still like little, you know, obviously I don't, you know, you, you've got, you've got one more than me on, on your podcast. So, <laughs> but uh, Hey, that's, I that's mean, a yeah. lot more. Yeah. That's one more. That's yeah. That's twice as much. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, so I but, and, am in the exact same way. Once I post, it's like the first 24 hours I'll look. And then same with a, a video, you know, the first 48 hours after that, I kind of like lose interest and, and I forget that I posted a video. <laughs> yeah. It, it's not that, I, it's not that I lose interest. I just, you know, the, the big thing is I want to make sure that what I said in the video is true for I didn't misspeak about something because mm-hmm. your viewers will call you out. I'm like, no, Dave, that's a four and five eighths inch barrel instead of a four and seven eighths inch barrel. You know, just stuff like that. That yeah. way I can get in the comments like, I'm sorry, I said the wrong link to the barrel or whatever have you. I just want to make sure I didn't, you know, misspeak on something, get false information. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So, so where can listeners find you again? Just 22 Plinkster, 22 P L I N K S T E R on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and on YouTube. I do not do Snapchat. All right. Awesome. Well, on that note, we are out of here. Want to send feedback? Tell us about a company or anything else. Go to gunfunny.com forward slash contact.